This is the Sony Alpha R5, and it's replaced all my Fuji gear. Let me explain why. So if you've followed me for some time, you'll know that I'm a bit of a Fuji evangelist. I've been with Fuji since 2012. Now I should preface this video by saying I am not the sort of person that changes their camera system in order to create YouTube videos. I'm not the sort of person that changes their camera system every year. I've been with Fuji since 2012. Before then I was with Nikon from 1994. I don't change every year, I change every decade. So this change to Sony has been well thought out and quite a big change. My first Fuji camera was the X100S. I bought it in 2013 as a camera to run alongside my main Nikon system. It was a fun walk around camera that I could take out when I didn't want to take a big camera out and just wander around and get great shots. I absolutely loved it. It was a beautiful camera. It was so much fun. The quality was beautiful. It was only 16 megapixels as I recall, but really, really nice camera. It was enough to convince me that I wanted to be in the Fuji ecosystem. And so I bought myself an X-Pro1 to run alongside the X100S. Couple of prime lenses, and I really, really enjoyed shooting Fuji. For my 50th birthday, all the way back in 2017, I upgraded to an X-T2. And I think that was really peak Fuji. That was when Fuji were at their absolute pinnacle. That camera, solidly built, really nice to handle, everything felt great. The image quality was really beautiful. 26 megapixel, sublime colors, beautiful contrast, really, really nice image quality. And of course, the famous Fuji film settings as well. It felt right. It didn't do video as well as I hoped. And as video progressed and I began to shoot more and more video stock, I felt that I needed to upgrade and in 2021, I went to the X-T4. Now, in terms of video, it was a massive increase. It had 422 10-bit, you could shoot 60p 4K. It was a really, really good camera. But I really felt that the build quality of that camera was a, at least one step, perhaps two steps down from the X-T2. It didn't feel, I can't put my finger on it, it didn't feel as solid. Um, it felt more plasticky, the, the metals used in the, the top plate just felt lighter and more fragile. The shutter button I really, really hated. I had to buy one of those little red soft shutter button things and even that wasn't really that great. I wasn't overly impressed with that. Then in 2022, I decided to upgrade to the X-H2. 40 megapixel sensor, fantastic video qualities, the pinnacle of Fuji's lineup at the time. And I just never really got on with it. If you've watched my series where my wife and I went over to Ukraine to get our cat, I drove across the width of Europe and I took my Fuji X-H2 with me to shoot video stock along the way. You'll know that I had a problem with that camera and that was that the shutter failed. Now this is the first new camera that I have ever had fail on me and it just doesn't inspire confidence. So I had to send that off to Fuji. Whilst it was off at Fuji being repaired, I had the opportunity to buy a GFX 50S secondhand. It's a seven year old camera. There was a well-known YouTuber that was selling off some of his gear and I decided to to give it a go. It was a good price. I bought a secondhand lens from mpb.com and I fell in love with that camera. It made me think about Fuji again. The image quality out of the GFX was sublime. It was absolutely beautiful. The problem was it was so good it made me realize that the X-H2 image was not as good as I hoped. There was a pronounced difference and that particularly showed up in the editing. You could push and pull that massive 50 pick or medium format sensor around left, right and center and get a fantastic image out of it. You couldn't do that with the X-H2. You had the problem with the worms, you had the problem with the noise, and it all added up into a feeling that I had two cameras, one for image quality, one for video. The X-H2 for the video, the GFX50 for the image quality. That was a difficult situation because if I wanted to shoot video and I'd taken the GFX out, I couldn't because it only did 1080, very low, poor quality video. If I wanted to get really, really high quality images whilst out shooting video, 
I could, but only in relatively low ISOs and only in relatively low contrast scenes with the X-H2. I didn't want to have to take two cameras. The GFX was an absolute beast. It was big, it was bulky, it was heavy. And so I decided to look to see if there were any cameras that I could get that image quality and video quality out of the same camera. When I bought the Fuji X-H2, I spent a fair bit of time in Wex Photographic taking a look at the Sony Alpha 7 IV. It was a good camera, but it just didn't feel as comfortable in the hand. It felt cheaper build quality. The viewfinder was nowhere near on a par with the X-H2. And the image quality, although I could only compare off the back screens as I tested it, it felt probably about the same, if perhaps slightly better because of that full frame and slightly lower megapixel count compared to the X-H2. It didn't feel the right camera for me. The X-H2 at the time did. Shortly after I bought the X-H2, Sony announced the Alpha 7 R5. If I'm honest, I could see at the time that it really ticked all the boxes that I was looking for. It had a beautiful full frame, high megapixel sensor, 61 megapixels. But as an advance over the R4, they'd put really good quality video in it. It could do 422 10-bit at 4K, 60 frames per second. It could do a cropped APS-C sensor mode and maintain that video quality. It was a real beast of a camera. It was also twice the price, more than twice the price of my X-H2, and it was quite difficult to justify. However, over this year, I've been watching the videos about the R5, and I've been shooting a lot with my GFX and not so much with the X-H2. I've really been about trying to get the best image quality out of my cameras rather than worrying too much about shooting video and it's been nagging at me. So I decided that it was time to give it a go. It was time to try a new system. I haven't tried a new system since 2013. It's a once in a decade thing. I realized if I sold all my Fuji gear, the GFX, the X-H2, all the lenses I've got, I could buy the Sony Alpha 7 R5 with one lens, the 24 to 105 f4 and have a little bit of change back. That would allow me to invest in the future if I'm really enjoying the system, but it would give me the chance to spend a year with this Sony camera to see if I could really enjoy it. And so I've had it just a few days now. I've been out shooting with it a couple of times, and honestly, I am very, very impressed with it. There are some quirks, there are some annoyances, there are some things I don't like about it, and I'll do another video about those, um, perhaps comparing them to the Fuji X-H2. But for the moment, I'm really, really enjoying the camera. I'm down here in Durham at the moment with the Sony. I'm going to do some shooting of the cathedral. It's not the best day, but I'm going to do some uh, long exposure shots of the river and the weir and stuff like that. Uh, just to build up my familiarity with it. Shooting it under a high quality scenario where I have the uh, camera on a tripod. I've got full control over everything and uh, just to see how much image quality I can eke out of it. I've got very similar shots taken on the X-H2. I've got very similar shots taken on the GFX, and I'm gonna compare those in uh, a video a little bit later on. But for today, I'm just gonna chill out, enjoy my time with the new camera, get used to it, get familiar with it. And to be honest, as soon as I picked it up, it was very, very familiar. The controls are somewhat intuitive. The menu system, not so much, but the uh, body exterior, the ergonomics of the camera, very, very intuitive. I picked it up very, very quickly. Jared Poland has a really good video on the menu systems. I spent an hour and a half watching that. It all kind of clicked into place. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please drop me a like and a subscription. If you are interested in changing from Fuji to Sony and want to hear more of my experiences, please drop a comment in below. And I will definitely be doing some more videos, of perhaps comparing the Fuji with the Sony in the future. So that's everything for today. I'll see you in the next one.